we need to talk about Firefox. So as many of you know, it's generally my go-to web browser, especially for browsing the bloated side of the internet. And it used to be really good. Firefox used to be great. Mozilla as a company used to be great. They used to have a pretty good market share, meaning that a lot of people were actually using it. Uh, but that's not really the case anymore. Google Chrome dominates the browser market share by far. Now, there are other browsers out there that maybe could end up giving Chrome a run for its money and they have saner defaults and they're um, gaining a lot of popularity like the Brave browser. But there are problems with this browser as well, mainly the fact that it is also Chrome. So is Chromium or ungoogled Chromium or Microsoft Edge. All of these browsers are using the same web engine as Google Chrome. And the web engine of your browser is really what matters. So I think it's important to support competing engines like Firefox's Gecko and not just use Chromium reskins simply because competition is what forces greatness. And if we're all using the same web engine, then there is less pressure for that greatness. So I'm gonna show you how to remove or improve some of the not so great features of Firefox simply because it's still an open browser. There's a lot of tweaks that can be made. So, you know, you can use this great browser engine without all of that extra crap that has been added throughout the years. So the first and most important thing we're gonna do is install a custom user JS. Now this affects many, many settings in your browser, uh, mostly settings to do with privacy, uh, disabling things like tracking and telemetry and fingerprinting. Now, in the past, people would mostly just change these settings by going into their uh, about config and then searching for all the different settings and change them to, from true to false or changing uh, their different number values. But this is actually a whole lot easier. It might seem complicated, but it is much, much faster than uh, going through and changing those settings. And I'll guide you through what you gotta do. So uh, go ahead and download uh, this zip file here from the GitHub. Uh, if you're using an older version of Firefox, because this is meant for the latest, you can check out this releases tab. And they have different versions depending on what version of Firefox you're using, like 91 or 90. Uh, but if you're on the latest and greatest Firefox, just download that zip file. Now, once that's done, uh, of course you want to go ahead and unpack the uh, zip file as well. And let me make my terminal bigger. Okay, so uh, go ahead to where you uh, unpacked that. And then if I do an LS, you can see all of these different files uh, that are inside of it. So what we want to do is just copy all of these files into the root folder of our Firefox profile. So if you go into about profiles, you can see all the different ones that you're using in uh, Firefox. Chances are you're just going to have the one, uh, but you can create new profiles uh, in here if you want, like for different activities you might be doing on the web. Uh, so whichever one uh, you're going to use right now, I'm inside of this test profile. You want to go ahead and copy that uh, directory path. And then we're just going to copy everything here into that directory path. All right, and so now you can see that everything has been uh, sent to there and we can also uh, open up this directory. So this is gonna open it as a GUI uh, and you can use your GUI file manager, of course, to copy it in here. Uh, but yeah, you can see all of those files are now inside here. And I'm going to go ahead and restart the browser uh, and then those settings are gonna automatically take place. Okay, so I'll just uh, close this and it should automatically go back into uh, that profile that I had. Let's go to about profiles to make sure. Okay, so now um, that this is applied, uh, the first thing that you might notice if we were to go to say google.com for example, uh, let me just change the um, theme to dark so that it becomes more apparent. Uh, so you can see that I've got this thing going on here where it kind of looks like I have a window open within a window. 
And this is because my resolution is being spoofed. So whenever I load websites, they're actually thinking that my literal monitor resolution is 1800 by 900 pixels instead of the actual 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you're a Tor user, this is the same kind of appearance you get when you're using the Tor browser. And the whole reason for this is to prevent canvas fingerprinting. All right, let's say that your monitor has a resolution that isn't actually very common. That is a data point that can be used to track you. But if everyone appears to have the same monitor, uh, then that data point becomes useless. But full screen still works. Uh, it also still works for videos, like you're not going to have um, bars on these sides or on the top and bottom. So don't worry, you can still consume content the same way you've always been doing it. Another thing you'll notice is that if we go to deviceinfo.me, uh, we are spoofing our operating system. So websites think that I'm running uh, Windows 10 instead of Gen 2. Again, this is to blend in. The Tor browser does the same thing so that all of its users are going to have the same user agent. Now we're gonna go ahead and review uh, some of our settings. So we'll go into the uh, settings, privacy, and security. Uh, so this is optional, but what you could do here under the permissions is you can block new requests that are trying to use your location. Um, you could block requests that are going to access your camera. Now, things like location, camera, and microphone, this isn't on by default. All this is gonna do is block those pop-ups when you go to, say, an online store that wants to try to use your location. Um, so that's all it's going to do. Uh, obviously, if you actually do want places to use your location, uh, then this is a step that you want to skip. Uh, now, we're going to review some of our about config settings. So we'll go into that. So again, these are optional things that you might want to do. Um, but for example, hardening your SSL preference, uh, meaning that when you try to connect to sites, you're going to refuse to use uh, weaker encryption schemes. So you'll want to look for this setting here and change it to false. And then there's another one. Let me just copy it. Uh, so the require safe negotiation, uh, you want to make sure that that is true and it should be already if you installed the custom user JS. You might also want to disable geolocation capabilities altogether, especially if you uh, disabled it in the prompt. So go ahead and search geo.enabled and then change that to false. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and disable the uh, refer header. So this is something that tells websites how you actually got to that site. Uh, so for example, certain content creators might have Amazon affiliate links where they actually get a cut of the revenue from Amazon because they referred you. Uh, but that could be looked at as some form of tracking because obviously now Amazon knows that you're consuming that particular creator's content. Uh, so if you look for uh, this setting here, network HTTP send refer header, and we want to change its value to zero and then save. Okay, so now the hard part is done. Uh, let's go ahead and finish up with the easy stuff. Uh, we're going to install uBlock Origin. Uh, so this obviously doesn't really need any introduction. Uh, it's the best ad blocker with a minimal footprint. Uh, so just go ahead and add that. All right, and we're all set. Um, and go ahead and run it in private windows as well, because I believe that the uh, user JS uh, actually does technically run everything in private windows. Uh, so you wanna do that with all your add-ons. Um, now for uBlock, you can uh, go ahead and pretty much just use the default settings here. Uh, you could go ahead and tick this, uh, I am an advanced user, and so that's going to uh, make the panel here be a bit more advanced and you can uh, block things like third-party scripts, third-party frames, uh, and third-party. That's uh, generally what I do. But like I said, just using it as its default settings is usually good enough. Um, there is also, uh, let's see, 
It actually looks like the option to block WebRTC uh, is not here in the newer version of uBlock Origin, but that's actually totally fine uh, because that setting comes bundled with the user.js file that's installed to block uh, WebRTC. And the only reason that that really matters anyway is if you're going to use a VPN uh, or some type of proxy with your browser, because sometimes there can be a leak uh, if WebRTC is still enabled. And you can always test that uh, with a DNS leak test if you're using a VPN or something like that to make sure that your IP is not leaking. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and install Decentralize. Uh, so what this does um, is it's going to prevent you from being tracked by the so-called free CDNs. So in case you didn't know, pretty much every major website these days is using a CDN or a content delivery network to speed up the content delivery for visitors around the world. Say for example, someone from Australia visits my website and the server for the site is physically hosted in New Jersey, then content like pictures, videos, and JavaScript libraries would have to be delivered from literally halfway across the world uh, in order for that user to see it. And then they might not have uh, as good of a, an experience. You know, it's gonna give them a longer load time. So what the CDN does is it loads that stuff uh, from somewhere that is closer to the user so that they can have a faster load time. Now, the issue here is these Free CDNs are usually provided by Facebook, Microsoft, or Google, uh, and they collect a lot of information about people visiting the sites that are using them. You know, that's why uh, these, di these different companies offer so-called free services, but they're only free because you are the product. Uh, so this is going to uh, block that. It's going to use uh, local CDNs to prevent Google, Facebook, et cetera, from being able to track you uh, if different websites are using them as CDNs. Next, we're going to enable a dark theme because uh, I don't know about you guys, but the default theme here is almost blinding. So uh, there are a couple of ways to do this. We're going to go into uh, add-ons and themes, and then we're gonna go to themes. And there's a dark theme right here, disabled by default, but we'll just go ahead and enable it. And so you can see that now this gives me, um, well, it makes this whole page dark. Like all of your different settings are gonna be dark. Um, if you go to, let's see, we're already using a dark mode there. Uh, but if I were to go to, let's do like DuckDuckGo, for example. So you can see that it's still, um, it's, it's still using the light theme. Now, the reason for this is because uh, these types of sites that have dark themes sort of built into them, like uh, Google, they try to test your uh, system preferences to see what you are using. Like, are you using a dark theme within your system? And then if you are, they set their theme accordingly. So you might be able to fix that by just, you know, literally going into your um, window manager, your desktop environment settings, and then just changing that to use a dark theme. Uh, but, you know, here where I'm using DWM, I don't uh, really think that there's an easy way to set that. So uh, what we're going to do is force a dark theme by installing Dark Reader. Uh, and this will also force a dark theme on websites that don't really have one. Uh, now, sometimes it can look a little bit wonky and crazy. So, uh, you know, if it doesn't look good, you know, if you, if you think there's a, a problem with it, then you can just uh, uninstall it. But I think it looks pretty good. Like if we go to DuckDuckGo, I think it looks fine. Uh, if we go to like Cirx or Cirx, uh, however you say it, then I think it looks fine as well. Uh, oh, and one last thing. So the uh, default search engine that um, Firefox uses, I believe is Google, right? Yeah, so it is Google by default. Uh, and you probably don't want that if you're trying to have a more private browsing experience. So uh, we're gonna change that to SirX. Um, pretty easy to do, just right click uh, up here in the URL bar and then click add SirX. Uh, and this same thing applies for pretty much any search engine in case you don't wanna use SirX for whatever reason. Uh, and then if we go back to our settings, we can change our default search engine to SirX. So now if I search for something like cows, uh, 
Oh, I forgot the uh, user JS changes that. But if you were to do like, um, here, I'll just show you real quick. So search and we'll enable this search. So now if I search cows, then you see that it's given me the results uh, from SirX. So there you go. Firefox is now great again. Hope you found this video useful. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Share this video with your friends and colleagues and have a great rest of your day.